If you could journey deep inside one of the trillions of cells that make your body, you would see 46 chromosomes packed tightly into a special region of each cell called a nucleus. Half these chromosomes come from your mother and half from your father. Each chromosome is a long, tightly coiled molecule called DNA. If you unwound it, the DNA in just one of our cells would stretch for more than six feet. DNA is made up entirely of building blocks that scientists abbreviate A, C, T, and G. The whole length of the DNA coil consists of these four letters in different combinations. But the spelling here makes all the difference. One C substituted for a T in the sequence can be the cause of disease. All the DNA in all the chromosomes is called the human genome. You might have heard people call the genome the blueprint for the human body or the blueprint of life. As part of the Human Genome Project, scientists figured out the order of these DNA letters, more than three billion in all. All those A's, C's, T's, and G's in sequence. And that's what scientists mean when they say they sequenced the human genome. Scientists have recognized that much of the DNA is organized into segments with a unique order of DNA letters and a very special role. These segments of DNA, about 25,000 in all, are called genes. The genes are instruction manuals for making all the proteins the body will ever need. They are the physical stuff that makes up our hair, our skin, our heart, and our blood. What has amazed scientists the most is how little these genes vary from one person to another. From a genetic perspective, each of us are 99.9% .9 alike. When you think about people across the globe, clearly there's differences with regards to how we look, issues with regards to height. There's a number of things that are different, and there are different issues related to health also. But we all must remember that we're 99.9% .9 alike. But understanding that 0.1% is so important to understand issues related to difference in disease. So yes, that is one of the key components of what we're learning now from the human genome. And that's going to be important in helping to improve the health of individuals across the world. Some of these genetic differences cause disease. For example, there are about 6,000 diseases caused by misspellings or other problems in single genes, including cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, and Huntington disease. In healthy red blood cells, for example, where the gene is spelled correctly, the shape of the red blood cells that carry oxygen is round. In sickle cell anemia, however, the gene that makes a key protein in red blood cells has a misspelling that sometimes changes the shape of the cell into a crescent, hence the name sickle cell anemia. These cells can't carry as much oxygen. If a person inherits misspelled genes from both parents, many of the blood cells produced are sickle-shaped. Only a decade ago, the hunt for genes that play a role in disease was a painstakingly slow process. But now that we know the sequence of the human genome, researchers can compare the DNA sequence from people who have a disease with the DNA sequence from those who don't. That helps tell us what part of the DNA, and therefore which gene or genes, play a role in causing disease. The Human Genome Project was a bold, historic undertaking to read out all of the three billion letters of the Human DNA Instruction Book. And that was achieved by April of 2003. So that gave us the book, but we're not very good yet at reading it. It also told us that we humans are 99.9% .9 the same at the DNA level, but because it's a big book, even 0.1%, that is one difference out of every 1,000 letters, leaves you with a lot of differences. And some of those are gonna be involved in individual risks of future illness, whether for Alzheimer's disease or diabetes or breast cancer. And it is our goal now to build on that foundation, having the sort of reference book to figure out how those variations play a role in disease.